Hane washte, good morning. Shetande wash to Timeheho, which means come in with a good heart. And I can tell you already, my heart is open and, and I hope all of yours is served well so that we can really think about home ownership and creating these opportunities for our native peoples all over, all over the country. I'm Patrice Kunish. I'm the director of the Center for Indian Country Development here at the Minneapolis Fed. And just a big warm welcome from all of us here at the Minneapolis Fed. I'd like to start by sharing my sincere gratitude for all of you for being here today in the River Room and on our live stream. We are being a uh, video and we're streaming this live to participants uh, around the country. We had a terrific day yesterday at Shakopee on the historic lands of the Dakota people where we delve deep into data, particularly data related to land records and, and ways to figure out how to improve home ownership and create affordable housing options for Indian country. We heard the powerful voices of Neil Kashkari, Joe Garcia, Ron Allen, Bob Gochi, and Jackie Pata. We heard about the strong intentions of our federal agency partners to improve their practices and engagement with our native communities as well. And we were truly inspired by the passion for and commitment to self-governance of Jason Adams, Matthew Cariaga, and Kevin Blazer, and so many others. Today, we'll tee up more innovative strategies and successful practices that create real opportunities throughout Indian country and scope out the work that needs to be done. It takes many hands to do this work, and we need to do it all together. We are really fortunate today to kick off this conversation with remarks from uh, Ron Feldman. Ron is our uh, bank's uh, first vice president. He leads our day-to-day -day operations at the Minneapolis Fed. Ron has held several positions of increasing responsibility at the bank uh, since joining uh, the Federal Reserve in 1996 with substantial expertise in the areas of banking supervision. He's also published research in a wide array of banking and financial topics, most recently as a co-author of a book called Too Big to Fail, The Hazards of Bank Bailouts, published by the Brookings Institute. Ron challenges us in the community development space to deliver meaningful outcomes, not just outputs. I'd like to think of today's gathering and celebration of the Tribal Leaders Handbook on Home Ownership as a significant outcome in itself, noteworthy particularly because it represents the collective commitment and effort from all of you, from our National Native Home Ownership Coalition and to all of us creating the blueprint for affordable home and housing in our Native people. So please welcome Ron Feldman. So I feel like I'm mostly going to get in the way of the substantive work you want to get today to today. So let me uh, so let me be quick. Uh, so I think I want to do three things in just a couple of minutes. So first, I want to welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to our building. Thanks for being here. It's an honor for me to come after uh, what we just heard and after what Patricia set up for today with all of the folks here. I want to thank first everyone at the Minneapolis Fed who helped put this on with all the partners. And a special thanks to the folks in the National Native Homeownership Coalition. I'm just going to read a couple of names. I apologize if there's other people here I should be recognizing, um, but there are several people who um, Actually, I received specific instruction to thank, so I'm going to make sure I do that. <laughs> so uh, Marietta Rodriguez, uh, who is the Senior Vice President of um, Neighborhood Works America. Terry Ludwig, who is CEO of Enterprise Community Partners. Jackie Panna, Executive Director of the National Congress of American Indians. And Tony Walters, Executive Director of the National American Indian Housing Council. So thank you very much for being here today. Uh, I'll just do two other quick things. First, I thought I would just try to put this, what we're doing here, in a little bit of context. I mean, you, you're, you know, we're uh, helping you're in the building we're at, um, which, as you can see, is sometimes hard to get into. Um, and uh, then maybe a, a request for feedback. So um, I want to just put a meeting like this. I mean, I think everybody here probably gets why the Federal Reserve is doing this, but, I, but it's not obvious. So I just want to sort of say that. And from my vantage point, there's really two things we learned from the financial crisis. So the great financial crisis, you know, was just 10 years ago. I think we're still living with, you know, implications of what happened for a lot of individuals. And I think there's two things that at least 
um, I think the Fed as a whole learned. One is um, we can't define what we want. If we want to be successful in what we're supposed to achieve, we can't be too narrow in how we're going to do that. So what do I mean by that? Um, one thing that we've been charged with doing is helping the economy overall get to full employment. And you know, I think a simple way of defining that is everybody who wants a job can get a job. I think you know, a lot of times we have focused on that as being very narrow. We look at data. We look at national uh, trends. Um, but I think sometimes, I mean, I don't think I know that during the financial crisis and leading up to it, we didn't do a good job of engaging with the widest range of people whose experiences and day-to-day day-to-day um, -day experience would have informed us about what was happening before the financial crisis. And I think particularly when you think about home ownership and housing and housing markets, we clearly did not understand what was going on. Um, and if we did, I think we would have added, we would have acted differently. So I think part of what we're doing and part of why we need to engage in the way that we are today and that we're going to be going forward with the widest range of communities is because, not just because it's the right thing on many levels, but if we want to be successful in figuring out how the economy is functioning, how we get uh, full employment, um, we're not going to be able to do that without efforts like this. And the second part, um, and we're still working on the first part, and we're definitely still working on the second part, which is what I'm going to cover real quickly, is just how can we be more transparent? How can we engage with the widest range of communities? How can we listen, and not just in a um, superficial way, but in a deep way to understand what's happening? I think the fact that it is so hard to get in this building is sort of a uh, a uh, little bit of a metaphor that we still have a ways to go. Um, and I think, you know, when I talk to people, I mean, I live 15 minutes from here, you know, the average person on the street walks by this building, they have no idea what we're doing. It seems like it's this imposing place. So we need to do a better job of engaging. And I think the work that Patrice and everybody in the Center for Indian Country Development is just one example of efforts we're making, efforts we're supporting, and things we need to do more of to ensure that we're listening to uh, the public because we work for you. And then the final request is for feedback. So as I said, we need to understand what's happening in the economy. We need to understand what's happening in housing markets, and we need to listen to you. So we need to figure out how to do that. Um, again, Patrice and everyone that works with her um, in the Center for Indian Country Development are doing that now. But if there's other ways we can do that, if there's ways that we can improve, I mean, you have the commitment from Neil Kashgari, who you met yesterday, and myself. We work with um, everybody here at the bank to try to do a better job, and we would love to hear from you directly through your feedback forms that you're going to fill out at the end of the day or during the day. Um, and whatever way that you want to get a hold of us and let us know, we need to reach out, but we want to hear from you. So welcome. Thank you for all the work you're doing, and have a great day. Ron, thank you for joining us today. Uh, next, we get to hear from Marietta Rodriguez from NeighborWorks America. She is a, a come join us, please, yes. Uh, NeighborWorks America is a co-sponsor of this conference. Marietta currently is serving as Interim Senior Vice President of National Initiatives at, for NeighborWorks America in Washington, D.C. In this role, Marietta works with senior executives and national experts to leverage the power of private-public par uh, private partnerships, something like we're trying to do today. She has a proven uh, record of leadership and accomplishments for creating and executing strategic initiatives that address some of the toughest challenges facing low-income families, home ownership, foreclosure prevention, community building, and engagement. Marietta is responsible for leading NeighborWorks America's programmatic support to its 245 member organizations around the country. So welcome, Marietta. It's really my pleasure to be um, here with all of you this morning. The theme of home ownership in Indian country is so important, and I applaud the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis their leadership on this, for their leadership on this issue. In particular, I'd like to thank President Neil Kashkari, First Prize, Vice President Ron Feldman, who we just heard from, as well as Patrice Kunish, for their commitment and hard work in tackling the challenging issues that face Indian country country. Additionally, I'd like to congratulate the Minneapolis Federal Reserve for establishing the Center of Indian Country Development and selecting home ownership as one of their strategic areas of concentration. 
The housing issues that face Indian country are very near and dear to me. I grew up in New Mexico where there are 23 Indian tribes, including nine Pueblos, three Apache tribes, and the vast Navajo Nation. I personally would like to, on behalf of NeighborWorks, would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you. NeighborWorks America is pleased to be a continuing sponsor, having also been a sponsor of the mortgage lending in Indian Country convening at the Salt River Pima Maricopa, um, Maricopa Indian Community in September of 2016. When NeighborWorks was formed over 40 years ago, it was largely in response to inner city neighborhoods being denied access to credit due to redlining and the perception that those families and ind individuals were poor credit risks. But that, we proved, was merely a perception. I can assure you that responsible and responsive lending can take place anywhere, including in Indian country. As opposed to over 20 years ago today, it's possible to purchase on tribal trust and restricted lands. But in many communities, it's simply not practical due for a variety of reasons, most notably the loan origination processing times, borrower challenges with credit, lack of access to homebuyer preparation like homebuyer counseling and education. But I think working together, we can change that reality. I would also like to recognize a NeighborWorks organizations that are in this room. Rollin Wood and Ron Maldonado from Native Partnership for Housing. Kevin Shipley and Arlen Kangas from Midwest Community Development Corporation. And Jim Norland from NeighborWorks Alaska. I know that homeownership changes people's lives. Native Americans, Alaskan Natives, and Native Hawaiians deserve the same homeownership opportunities as every other American. Let's continue to work together to make the pathway to home ownership as accessible for everyone. Thank you. I wanted to mention that our other co-sponsor enterprise community partners represented by the coalition represented in the coalition by Russ Caney, whose ownership, home ownership resource book uh, for tribes in New Mexico gave us the template to create um, our tribal leaders handbook and home ownership. We'll be hearing from Terry Ludwig, the CEO of enterprise community partners at our lunch program. So what I really should do is recognize all of the Native National, the National Native Home Ownership Coalition members. Could you raise your hands? Very good, thank you. We are here to celebrate your contributions to this critical work and bringing capital to Indian country, highlighting the importance of data, records, education, and governance. So thank you for all, thank you all for being here today. You know, you've come from all over the country to do this serious work, from Alaska to Hawaii, Maine and New York, Texas and Arizona, from Washington DC and Victoria, British Columbia. We truly are a national and international coalition, and we look forward to expanding our networks and connections with all of you. So Pila Mayum. All right, so let's get on with the, with the program. I think I need to do a few housekeeping items. As I mentioned earlier, this conference is being live streamed and recorded. If anyone is participating live stream and have a question for us, please send us an email to CICD at mpls.frb.org. That's CICD at mpls.frb.org. I just wanted to mention a few words about this lovely program and some of the work that you'll see in, in, throughout the day. The program obviously has a theme to it that will carry forward uh, as we get to the noon hour. It was created by a colleague of ours here at the bank, Lori Cordy, who's just a phenomenal graphic designer. And together, we, we really uh, chose uh, themes that would inspire us, that would be all inclusive of this work and, and, and give us good energy. It's almost a bit of a, a memento, tell you the truth. Um, and if you open up the book, you see on the, on the left side, 
We have a uh, tribal leader, and, and this will also be another theme throughout the day. Isaac Perez, who's the executive director of the Pueblo of San Felipe Housing Authority, said, the way I see it, my job is to make houses bloom in the desert. So look forward to seeing more of these, uh, these leadership um, quotes. We have, uh, we have um, uh, the accomplishments of the National Native Homeownership Coalition, and I'd like you to take a look through them. We have five working groups, and they've been working very hard for the last several years, and some truly uh, uh, good accomplishments to be very proud of. On the last page, we have lessons learned, and this is from our dear friend and partner, Sharon Vogel. So take a look at the, at the lessons and, and think about more lessons that we can uh, formulate from our conversations today and share with one another. So this will be our guiding, um, our, our, our guiding light for today.